Hello and welcome to the Online Public Information Centre for the South Down District Stormwater Servicing and Environmental Management Plan. My name is Steve Hollingworth. I'm a water resources engineer and project manager with the Municipal Infrastructure Group, and we've been retained by the City of Mississauga to carry out a Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Study. The study area is in the southwest corner of Mississauga, is generally bound by Winston Churchill Boulevard, South Down Road, Lake Ontario, and the northern bounds of the study area are north of Royal Windsor Drive. The purpose of this online public information centre is to provide information on existing conditions through the study area, alternative solutions that we've considered, their evaluation, and our preliminary preferred set of solutions making up the management plan. And we're looking for feedback from you on the evaluation and those recommended solutions. Information on how to provide feedback is included at the end of this video. A master drainage plan was previously prepared for the South Down District in the year 2000. Over the last 21 years, there's been lots of changes to criteria and standard approaches for both stormwater and environmental management. And there have been numerous changes in policies at the local, regional and provincial level that make the previous master plan redundant. For that reason, the city initiated development of a new stormwater servicing and environmental management master plan to establish updated stormwater management criteria and environmental protection requirements for the South Down District. The South Down District Stormwater Servicing and Environmental Management Plan is following the Municipal Class Environmental Assessment or EA process. It's being conducted as a master plan satisfying the requirements of Schedule B projects. Under the Municipal Class EA process, that involves satisfying Phases 1 and Phases 2 of the Municipal Class EA. The project was initiated in 2019, and we had our first public open house in June of 2019. Since then, work has been undertaken to inventory existing conditions through the study area, develop alternative solutions, consult with agencies, and establish our preliminary preferred solutions making up the management plan. The purpose of this online public information center is to present our findings to the public and solicit feedback on our evaluation and the recommended projects that make up the master plan. Instructions on how to provide feedback are provided at the end of this presentation. There are five watercourses in the study area. Joshua's Creek flows through the southwest corner of the study area and Sheridan Creek traverses the northeast corner of the study area. Given the very small length of these creeks within the study area, they have not been studied in great detail. Clearview Creek crosses into the study area through a culvert under Winston Churchill Boulevard. There is an online agricultural pond north of Lakeshore Road, and the creek south of Lakeshore Road was historically realigned in a concrete channel. Avonhead Creek begins north of Royal Windsor Drive and has been significantly impacted by historic practices. Much of the flow is diverted into a storm sewer at Orr Road, and it is piped from Lakeshore Road to Lake Ontario. North of Lakeshore Road, the former Lakeside Creek was removed and replaced by a system of storm sewers that flow under the Clarkson Wastewater Treatment Plant. Our study included an analysis of the storm sewers and overland flow routes in the study area. At the bottom of the screen, the red dotted lines represent storm sewers that are significantly undersized relative to current city standards. The image at the bottom right shows the overland flow systems that carry storm runoff once the storm sewers are full. Overland flow can be contained in the road right-of-ways for up to the 1 in 100 year storm, with the exception of a portion of Widemar Road in the northwest corner of the study area. This slide presents some of the key opportunities and constraints within the study area. Constraints to future development would include the floodplains associated with the open watercourses, 
the areas regulated by the conservation authorities and the natural heritage features protected under the city's and region's official plan policies. Opportunities include realignment and rehabilitation of the open water courses, the potential extension of the open reaches of Lakeside Creek, restoration and expansion of some of the existing natural heritage systems, as well as stormwater management retrofits, which had been identified in previous studies, which could help improve the quality and quantity of water reaching Lake Ontario. If not adequately mitigated, urban development can have a significant impact on the natural environment. The transformation of natural surfaces to asphalt and concrete can lead to increased flooding and erosion, reduced water quality, reduced groundwater recharge, degradation to both aquatic habitat and wildlife habitat, and reduced biodiversity. The first option explored in almost any municipal class EA study is the do-nothing alternative. For this study, the do-nothing alternative represents future development without any stormwater or environmental controls. The image at the top of the screen shows what's been assumed for future development and redevelopment in the study area, based largely on the city's official plan. Our analyses predict that future development without any controls could cause the flows in the water courses through the study area to nearly double. In addition, a number of additional storm sewers within the study area would be overwhelmed and no longer meet the city's criteria. The second alternative considered for the South Down District is to maintain current accepted approaches for stormwater and environmental management. The stormwater management criteria are listed on this slide, which have been established by the city and the conservation authorities. There are a number of images at the bottom of this slide that illustrate the different practices that could be used to achieve the required levels of stormwater quality and quantity treatment. The next alternative is centralized stormwater management facilities for future development. Currently, stormwater controls are typically implemented on a site-by-site -site basis as each property undergoes development. With this centralized approach, there would be fewer but larger stormwater management facilities, with each treating the runoff from multiple properties and developments. This slide shows potential locations and sizes for centralized stormwater management facilities. Stormwater management facilities could also be constructed to treat the runoff from existing developed areas. A previous study by the city of Mississauga identified three potential retrofit stormwater management facilities in the study area, which are shown on this slide. These retrofit facilities have been carried forward as an alternative for stormwater management for the South Down District. The next alternative proposes a number of improvements to the water courses in the study area. Beginning with Clearview Creek, this would include a realignment west of Winston Churchill Boulevard to contain the floodplain and improve the development potential of the properties. It would also include removal of the existing online pond north of Lakeshore Road and renaturalization of the existing concrete line channel south of Lakeshore Road. Flooding along Avonhead Creek could be reduced through culvert and channel improvements north of the railway and regrading south of the railway to contain any flood water spilling over the tracks. This alternative would also include rehabilitation and realignment of Avonhead Creek from Orr Road to Lakeshore Road and realignment south of Lakeshore Road to join the proposed naturalized mouth of Clearview Creek. Finally, the existing system of storm sewers north of the Clarkson wastewater treatment plant could be removed and replaced with a natural channel. Unfortunately, our investigations concluded that it would not be possible to have a continuous natural channel through the wastewater treatment plant property to connect to Lakeside Creek south of Lakeshore Road. 
the last alternative examined for the South Down study area is storm sewer upgrades. For most areas, this involves simply replacing existing undersized storm sewers with larger pipes that can meet current city standards. The Avonhead Road storm sewer would be extended north from Lakeshore Road, which would allow the existing storm sewers north of the Clarkson Wastewater Treatment Plant to, re to be removed. Removal of these storm sewers would reduce the risk of flooding at the Clarkson Wastewater Treatment Plant and would facilitate future development and restoration of natural areas east of Avonhead Road. The different alternative solutions have been evaluated against a number of different criteria pertaining to the natural, social, and cultural environments, their technical effectiveness and feasibility, and cost. We'll go through the evaluations in the next slides. The following tables summarize our evaluation of the alternative solutions. I invite you to read the details of these tables on your own. The do-nothing solution is clearly not recommended. Uncontrolled flows from future development would have unacceptable impacts on flooding, erosion, and water quality. Maintaining the current standard approaches for stormwater and environmental management is recommended, as these practices will adequately mitigate the impacts of future development on the natural environment. However, it is recognized that this approach will not achieve any improvements to the existing degraded water courses through the study area. Constructing centralized stormwater management facilities for future development is not recommended. This is primarily due to the prohibitive challenges to implement these facilities when not all properties in the study area contributing to a facility are developing on the same timeline. Retrofit stormwater management facilities are not recommended. There are significant challenges to secure land for these facilities and significant costs for their construction. In addition, as the facilities are located near Lakeshore Road, they would not achieve any improvements to the remainder of the water courses upstream of Lakeshore Road. The improvements to Clearview Creek through the study area are recommended. It's recognized that there are significant costs and challenges associated with implementation of this solution, but will achieve significant benefits to both the natural and social environments. The improvements to Avonhead Creek between Orr Road and Lake Ontario are recommended. Similar to Clearview Creek, the benefits to the natural and social environments justify the costs and challenges associated with implementation of this alternative. The improvements to Avonhead Creek north of Orr Road are also recommended, as they will significantly reduce flooding and allow for future development both north and south of the railway. The new open channel for Lakeside Creek north of the Clarkson Wastewater Treatment Plant is not recommended. There are prohibitive challenges to implement this solution, as it involves numerous different properties and can't reasonably be implemented in a staged approach. The benefits to the natural environment would also be limited, as it would remain disconnected from the open reach of Lakeside Creek south of Lakeshore Road. Upgrades to the storm sewer systems through the study area are recommended. There are relatively few challenges for reconstruction of the existing storm sewer systems, and the new storm sewer system on Avonhead Road will benefit the Clarkson Wastewater Treatment Plant and the natural environment and future redevelopment sites east of Avonhead Road. This table, which I invite you to read on your own, provides information on the projects that would be implemented by the City of Mississauga. Of note is that the improvements to both Clearview Creek and Avonhead Creek south of Lakeshore Road should be coordinated and integrated, and the Avonhead Road storm sewer upgrade should be completed prior to or as part of any development of the lands on the east side of the road. The next table provides similar information on the projects that would be implemented by private property owners as part of future developments and redevelopments in the study area. Of note is the requirement for interim channel connections if the improvements to Clearview Creek and Avonhead Creek north of Lakeshore Road can't be implemented in a single phase.
Our analyses and findings are based on anticipated future development conditions in the South Down District as per the city's official plan. Credit Valley Conservation has an initiative underway to encourage private properties to voluntarily retrofit their sites to improve stormwater quality and quantity. As well, some of the existing developed properties in the study area may undergo redevelopment in the future, which could trigger a requirement to bring those properties up to current standards for stormwater and environmental management. Finally, stormwater low impact development practices could be integrated into future road reconstruction projects in the study area with benefits to stormwater quality and quantity. These measures, if and when implemented, would improve water quality and quantity control beyond what has been predicted in our study. This concludes the presentation for our online public information center. We strongly encourage you to complete the online survey, which can be found on the project website. We'll soon be reviewing the survey results and any other feedback received to refine or confirm our recommended solutions. Later this fall, we'll issue a notice of completion and a copy of our final study report will be available for you to review. Thank you for your attention and we look forward to hearing from you.